glass. Hey, hey, give hey, my glass of valve. Rashi, Minako Ah, uh, it's yes. Past two, three days, I've just been like a uh, headache and just feeling there. It's freaking weather, man. It went from oh yeah, several days of it being way too warm. Now it's bloody just too dark, dreary, and cold that I don't even have my f main van on. Because this is that bloody cold. It's ridiculous. So the third record session. So, let's have our word of the day. Um, I actually thought I'd do it to the day. Hey, because it fits, but where is it? Um, oh wait, no, that's the wrong one. Matsuri Festival. <laughs> that took a while. I think I, I think I've used that that as a word of the day in one of the previous arcs because you know it's fitting. You know the Watana Guys Festival. That's what Mats Matsuri is. It means festival. But since the first record session, which was only one part, didn't have a word of the day, we'll have a second one. So how about Matsu, which is pine tree. have a headache. Not that there's anything new, I usually have a headache, but it's been particularly... Ugh. It's just... Uh, this makes me want to hibernate, it's just like, ah, oh, fuck it. Rick, did you hear? There's, there's to be a prize for the club activity today. Man, it, this room has a bit more of an echo to it when my fan is not, I gotta say. I remember. Mion was going to be banged for... If the end of Melanie and out of her pocket as a prize. I couldn't believe she could just afford that. Therefore I have to assume that she has some kind of guarantee that she won't lose. And you know what it is? It's fifty uh, thousand yen! Fifty thousand yen! So don't go stared at me. Oh no. She would expect me to be surprised to hear that the prize was fifty thousand yen. It's natural to be surprised after hearing that sum. I didn't react because I already knew it. Perhaps I gave the impression that I've known it for a long time. Did you say, isn't it amazing that the price is 50,000 uh, yen? 50,000 yen? What the heck is that? That's like five years worth of the Keiichi GNB. Like I said, the same thing to Keiichi. She probably assumed that I wasn't listening to her. So she decided to talk to Gage instead. Ow, wow, 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 wow. That is just a small mistake. I'm fine. Wait, is this Rika saying that then? If I get 55,000 uh, yen, I can get a lifetime supply of soy sauce. Wait, whatever would you buy soy sauce with a price like that? Why ever, I mean? There's a certain someone always gives me a dirty look when I ask to go and get soy sauce from the store. Hey, you. You're so mean, Rika. How much soy sauce do you think you can even get from it, Fazni Man, I want to see. It should join the conversation which finally brought us to our normal pace. I can imagine that. Buying that amount of soy sauce. I mean, where would you even get it from to get that much worth of soy sauce? No to pursue a greater happiness than I need to sacrifice a smaller one. In a perfect world, Rika Frida was supposed to be surprised to hear from her best friend that the prize was 50,000 yen. But I already knew that. I knew it from my previous life, so all I could do was give her a boring reaction. 
I can't be surprised at the big rise of 50,000 yen. I can't give her the reaction that she expects from me. I'm losing the ability to be surprised by life. After the continual repetition of small instances like this, there will be nothing left that I can find interesting. I have nothing to be surprised about. I'll never be impressed with anything. Eventually I'll lose my emotions entirely. That's why I'm always trying to be careful. I make sure I act like a brute who doesn't know anything. Even though I may not be impressed, young girl Rick Freddy should be impressed with many things. Rick Freddy is supposed to act excited when she encounters something for the first time. I try to do at least. But the more and more I try, the more I feel like Rick Freddy is someone very distant. Rika. I'm sorry, I know I'm only wasting my lifespan by feeling depressed like this. I should enjoy this life. I don't mean my lifespan, literally. Not referring to my physical lifespan, but my mental one. The more and more I repeat the same days, the more I lose. From wonder to passion. And eventually my life will become like an overplayed videotape. A videotape that's stuck, it seems. If I'm tired of that tape, I have a choice to close my eyes and sleep. By the time I wake up, the video should be over. But in reality, my life is not a beat up old videotape. If I close my eyes and sleep, that would be my death. When my mental lifespan is over, Rick Brady will turn into a doll who can't even move a finger by her own will. When that happens, my pursuit of happiness will be over. I don't want that to happen. It's been at least a hundred years, if not more. I've been stuck in this living hell for so long. I don't want my life to end here. Sorry, I'm fine now. You must find it funny that I'm complaining about only a century. I don't know, I've grown used to this fate by now. Ah, alright. I'm fine. I'm Rico Freire, I'm Rico I, I assume they communicate telepathically because... I don't know, because it would seem a bit odd if she just starts talking to her because to everyone else it'd be like she's talking to herself. If I don't stay focused on being Rico Freire, I'm afraid I might end up showing my true self inside of that shell. Rico Freire is supposed to be a cute and innocent little girl after all. Me? What would you buy if you got 50,000 yen right now? Um... I wonder if I could buy the catacomb doll. Do you think they'll sell it to me if I... If I'll give 50,000 yen to the fried chicken store? Oh! I think it'd be easier for you to buy the tools and wheelbarrow to steal the doll. I bet Renna's and I could break the chain with our bare hands if you want to. <laughs> I agree on that one. Well, we've seen that. Back in... Was it Onikakushi? I think it might have been. Is that, I think it was Onikakushi. Where Keiichi helped Rena get the... Uh, Colonel Sanders uh, thing, you know. Out of the trash dump or something. I can't really remember how they did it. But I think it got, like, shoved in the pile at some point. Oh, you're all so mean. Oh, well, so we rejoin the typical flow of conversation, naturally. Once said to that, point, it's not hard for me to continue as Rika Friday. Being Rika Friday is like flying a kite for me. Once it's up in the air, I can stay, it can stay in the air for a while. But if something happens and it loses control, it's one heck of a challenge to get it back on track. Every time it tries to get back up in the air, the kite gets dragged on the ground and wears out. I'm exactly like that. Finally, Mion started clapping her hands to get Edmund's attention. I already knew the rules. The members will be broken into five different groups, and each group plays a game that they choose together. I was secretly hoping that Mion would change the rules for some reason. There's nothing more boring than to already know what was going to happen. Mian can be very capricious. She really, uh, she really might change the rules. Yep, it seems like she's been planning this game for several days already. Strong will can be faded too, huh? Normally, when we're doing club activities, Mian decides what to play at the last minute. She opens a lock and randomly decides what game to play. For that reason, our club activities are rarely repeated throughout my lives. That's why I'm never bored of them. But just as Hanyu said, today's event was something that Mion had been planning for a while. I was certain she wouldn't suggest anything spontaneously today. 
In that case, this won't be up to random chance. Mion had only one idea in her mind. Therefore, it was equivalent to destiny. The lower idea of having this event in the toy store is actually a spontaneous one. In all the lives I've repeated, there's very low chance for this event to occur. You shouldn't expect anything to be different. I'm not expecting it. Of course, I was lying just now. I was hoping that Mion would suggest a new rule for this game. You know what? It's just like, she'll have two different voices for Rika. When she's talking to everyone and like putting on, you know, like her. It's like, this is how they expect me to act. Because this is how she would act. If not for the fact she'd been in a loop for a hundred years or more. But, you know, for like when she's talking to Hanya and all that. I have a bit more of a mature tone because she's like, uh, I'm so done with this shit. Very cynical character now. Well, I guess she was always a cynical character, it's just we didn't really know that she was a cynical character because we'd never really saw it from her perspective. If it was the same rules again, I'd be suffering for a few minutes while I listened to her instructions. Nothing's more frustrating than walking the same path over and over again. Please, Mion, please change my fate. Please. First, we're going to be divided into five different groups. The winner from each table... It was the same rules after all. Sorry I was holding on to a small hope. Wait, no, sorry, I was holding on to a small hope. <laughs> it's like, you just shove Hanyu on the screen, but it's not her dialogue immediately. Small hopes will hurt you, Rika. You're right. you told me so many times, but I never learn. Hanyu has taught me so many times. She taught me the trick to swimming in the flow of destiny. The flow of destiny is just like a river's. By going with the flow, I can swim in the direction I want to some extent. But of course, trying to swim against the flow requires great efforts. Allowing myself to drift causes the least amount of strain. Of course, some strong currents are impossible to resist, even with great force, effort. If I recklessly try to resist without realizing it's impossible, then I'll only wear myself out needlessly. Just as if fighting a river's current. So Hanyu's taught me... Taught me to read, read those currents. Which is why I should have easily imagined that the rules would be the same the moment I learned me on plan today's event in advance. Yet I still wish the rules would be different. A completely wasteful action. In the end, my hopes were betrayed, only leaving my heart worn out. And things like this that caused me to separate further from Rick and Freddy. Eventually I grow tired of everything, lose all interest, and die. Fate which can't be fought must be accepted. I know you can read the flow of destiny, Rika. You're right. My life spends already growing short. I should treasure what I have left. I sighed and pretended as though I was listening to what Mion was explaining. What's wrong, Rika Chan? Are you bored? It just surprised me all of a sudden. Are you talking to me? This had never happened before, so I thought he was talking to someone else. Well, Keiichi is the one who, like, uh, broke the rules in a way, I guess, because he's the one, and that's like, you know, just well, well, yeah, there's like the rules she explained at the start of this arc. He's like, yeah, and all that, blah, 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 and then he's like. But Kate, you remembered an event from a previous life, and that was like something that never happens. So Kate, she's clearly got something special there. It seemed like Kate, really was talking to me. Yeah, you've looked bored ever since this morning. Are you sleeping from waking up too early? <laughs> I was just thinking that I've already done this before. No one would understand what I mean anyway, but Kate, you might. And so I told him how I honestly felt. Huh? Are you serious? No wonder Beyond seems so used to this. I'm looking forward to it since it's my first time, though. I envied him for feeling that way. I sighed knowing that I never will. Remember the first few arcs? And how these scenes were all so just like over the top and it was, it was glorious. 
but now now it's very cynical because now we we've gone through multiple arcs we see what happens at the end of those arcs doesn't tend to end well and now we finally get Rika's perspective and it's all starting to seem even more cynical than any other arc I don't understand how frustrating it is to hear the same instructions over and over again I went to cram school once and studied ahead a lot there I remember how much I hated hearing the same lectures in school Remember when I was an important backstory in one of the arcs? I think it might have been the previous arc, even. Kichi didn't understand me, but I'm glad that at least he understood how frustrating it was to repeat the same situation. Oh, I'm the same. I'm frustrated at school, too. What? Me, really? You always seem so happy. Rick and Freddy supposed to be happy at school. That's why I act that way. Hearing the same things over and over again is like torture. It's easy for me to charge what, uh, change what Satoko cooks for dinner. I can simply volunteer to cook instead of her. But I can't change what the teacher teaches at school every day. I have no choice but to be quiet and listen to her lecture. It's like, man, I know all this shit now, man. You repeat this a hundred times at least. Yeah, there's nothing you can really do. You can't just tell a teacher to move on because you already know what she's teaching you. But this is a different story. It's a game. <laughs> just be like with Ricky, it's like, yeah, 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 Chie, Sensei, whatever. I learned all this a hundred years ago. <laughs> it's like, how could you have learned it a hundred years ago? You were alive a hundred years ago. It is a game, but it's already predetermined. It's fixed! You don't know that. After all, we're being split into five tables by drawing lots, right? Plus, well, so each group gets to choose what game their tables plays. There's no way to predict what games we'll do battle over. What exciting turnarounds await us today. This, right here, is the scenario that played out in Watanagashi and Makashi. I mean, we didn't really see much of it in Makashi because it was all from Shion's perspective. But it's the same scenario there, isn't it? They split up into groups, had their own games, and it was glorious. So it looks like it's following into that timeline here, so that's interesting. It's like we're actually seeing events we've seen before playing out, and we see how Rika has seen it a number of times, and it brings a different... Uh, perspective to it all doesn't it it's like when we we see like those hilarious scenes throughout all the other arcs where they play the games it was glorious but now we see that it's loops and loops and loops for a hundred years or more for Rika and it's just like the whole time she must have been like you know how cynical was she within all of that was she like always putting on an act or sometimes did she just enjoy it or what? It's just like, hmm, you know? Yeah, there's a, no way I'd predict. Uh, did I read all that? There's no way to predict what games we'll do battle over, or what exciting turnarounds await us today. But I can make a good guess. No, you can't. Can't you smile, does he contradicted me? That smile seems so ignorant to me. While the groups will be decided by drawing lots, each club member will be in a different group, Keiichi. You will be sitting over there. But Keiichi will be sitting over there. My table will be right there. I'll be playing a fishing game. You'll be playing a game called Billionaire. I don't know how, but the last time we were broken into five separate groups. It couldn't have been a coincidence. I'm sure Mion did something to ensure it would end up like that. I'm 100% sure. As for the games we play, I'm not totally sure, but... If each member in the group follows the same thinking patterns, they'll probably end up making the same choices. If you roll dice many times, you begin to approach the average. One person's spontaneous act can be random, but multiple people's thoughts can be averaged out for the most part. The more people that are involved, the more difficult it is to well, alter the path of fate. That's why I'm pretty sure that we'll end up playing the same games. Can't you seem surprised to hear my prediction? What the hell? Is that like a premonition? How can you be so sure? That's what fate is all about. <laughs> fate, huh? 
That makes me want to smash that fade into pieces. He smiled at me again. I knew that he was just smiling without reason, but I felt a small hope from him. After all, Keiichi really did shatter fate before. But that was just a miracle that happened in my previous life. I couldn't expect him to do the same thing in this one. Otherwise, I would be worn down by my high expectations again. Alright, we're going to decide our get uh, dro uh, gl 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 groups by drawing lots from this box. Club members go first. Leon drew first and Sadako followed. So it's the same as the last time. I really don't want to fight against a club member at the very start. Sorry if I get the same group, Rikachan. If we get the same group, I mean. Don't worry, your table is over there. Mine is right there. Whatever you say, you watch. Uh. Okay, she looked upset. See, my predictions are always right. You're a prophet. It was, it was a twenty percent chance. Anyone can make a random guess. Because you told me that it was just a coincidence. And what if I predicted my seat right too? What's the percentage for that? Um, it's twenty of twenty, so four percent. I believe you if you get it right without a percent that low. Can't you grin at me believing such a chance was impossible? It's your turn now, Rick Chan. Now, if she had told him, like, oh yeah, tells him who wins the game, and it turns out that way, then Keiichi would be like, okay, what the hell? It's your turn now, Rick Chan. Mion handed me the box of slips. No matter what I did, I had to be getting that table. There was a reason behind it. Men was doing something to make sure that we all set a different, get a, get a different table. I thought about why Mion would do that. With the information I've got about Mion over many years, I could see her reasoning. She probably thinks that she'll feel bad if a member loses in the first stage. You're right. If the club members are in the same group, someone will have to lose. If everyone was in a different group, we'd all have a chance to move on to the second stage. That's why she was controlling this draw. I put my hand inside of the box. I could feel several folded pieces of paper inside it. But if you thought for a moment, it was odd. No matter which one I chose, I'd never get any other table. I wonder how she's making it so you sit at that, that last table. Me too. Only me on knows. All I know is that no matter which paper I choose, I'll be sitting at that last table. Ah, I got it. Well, the papers in this box are the same? They must be. I'll bet Mion set some kind of trap on this box. There's probably a box for a magic show or something. There could be some kind of gimmick inside the box, and she can switch what's inside of it. Depending on who's drawn the paper, she change out the lots and control the result. I didn't know exactly how, but I was sure she was doing something. I didn't even need to know how she was doing it. The most important thing was why. Me? I don't know which one to pick. No matter which one you pick, your fate is already decided. How are them fitting words there, Mion? She was admitting it herself. I was certain then. Based on what I felt inside, there were less than ten pieces of paper inside of this box. In other words, there were, a hidden pe there, there were hidden pieces of paper that I couldn't touch somewhere inside the box. I smiled at Mion as I figured out her trick, but she had no clue why I was smiling. I'm taking this one. Sure, let me see. Uh huh. Wow, the club members are all divided into separate groups. Mion behaved as though this was news to her. She's such an actress. The other contestants made a dissatisfied noise. They'd have to face a club member no matter which table they got. Keiichi was surprised too, and not only because we were divided. See, our fate is already decided. I smiled at him in return. Keiichi was in denial for a moment, but then he smiled back at me. The possibility was 1 in 25. I'm impressed. It was not. I predicted that Mion and Sonoko would be at a different table, so the possibility was even lower than that. Keiichi understood that. But normal people like him can't understand that meaning of fate. That's why he put it off as a coincidence. But Keiichi, what if my prediction is right about what game you'll be playing? The possibility will be one in billions. Fitting. <laughs> Fitting, indeed. There are a lot of games in the store. What if that prediction is right, too? 
Will you still believe it's just a coincidence? I stayed quiet in my seat and waited to see what game my group was going to decide on. They were going to choose the fishing game. I can't expect them to choose anything other than that. I can't have high expectations, otherwise they'll be hurt again. One of the boys stood up. He walked towards the shelf full of games and picked up one box. He lifted the box above his head and turned around so he could show it to us. I closed my eyes as he did so. But I should still hear what he was saying. Good silly game. Check this out, do you guys remember this? We should play this one. Yeah, it was the one with the sitting fish, right? I could taste the bitter chemicals from my brain in my mouth. I clicked my lips and tried to endure this feeling. So depressing the tone, isn't it? Oh, oh, oh. Sorry, I guess I'm not doing well today. For some reason, I can't just accept this flow. It wasn't because I wasn't feeling well, of course. It was because of my emotions. Our powers are getting weaker, and we can only rewind about two weeks of our lives. I was feeling that the end was near for us. In order for me to change my tragic fate, I need more time to prepare. I can only go back two weeks. That means any power to resist my fate is significantly weakened. Even if I become as weak as a small leaf in the river, I should be able to do something in order to change my path. If I can only go back to the point where I'm getting ready to be swallowed into the whirlpool, there's no chance for me to escape it. I lived for so long believing that I could eventually escape my fate and survive. I believed that I had a chance in every moment of every life I lived. But there are limits to those chances. There are so many limits in my repeated lives. And perhaps this might be my last chance. That may be why I'm feeling so restless. Insert to Zanakin. <laughs> just like, just like, listen to my story. This may be our last chance. Stop it, Rika. The harder you think about it, the worse it'll be on your mind. I know. Just be quiet already. My brain was numb, so if surrounded by as if surrounded by a grey mist. I was inside the crowded toy store, but felt very far away from everyone else. The tighter I closed my eyes and the harder I clenched my teeth, the emptier my head became. No, 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 no. Rika, Rika, are you okay? Huh. Um, as I tried to focus, I became conscious again. And you looked at me with concern. I tend to lose my mind usually right after coming back from death. I usually have more time to relax and get used to my new life. But I have no time for that now. The Watanagashi Festival is only two weeks away. I can't just relax and wait for myself to get used to things. Don't be a wimp, Rika. Don't be a wimp. Fight against fate. But even if I do, that fate always betrays me and I grieve. What if I did the opposite? What if I didn't fight against fate? A few weeks after the, the uh, Watanagash Festival of 1983, I will die because I am fated to do so. Fight. Don't fight. 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 As I repeat the same words, they started to lose all meaning. I felt like I was chanting something. You know, if it would be worded as don't fight, well, Fight or run away, fight or run away, then it'd be pretty much anxiety there. Well, it kind of is in a way, really, isn't it? It's just like, oh, what, what, what is like? She's dreading it, and she's just like... It's just... But at this point, is she really even dreading it all that much? Because it's just become predictable to her, because it's happened so many times. But she has, probably has just the tiniest glimmer of hope still inside her, that maybe fate can be changed here. Read the same words as I lose all meaning, I felt like I was chanting something. I bit my tongue in my mind and forced myself to stop thinking about it. I was calming down a little bit. When I opened my eyes, I saw the fishing game right in front of me, as well as my bow. Someone placed it there while I had my eyes closed. It was as if I was seeing the immovable reality of fate right in front of me. I felt like a final, like a final victory to me. 
What do you think, Keiichi? This is what fate is all about. Do I want to earn his agreement or his sympathy? I stood up and walked towards Keiichi's table. His group couldn't decide on a game, so the store owner was deciding for them. Just like the last time. The store owner will pick the game of life. <laughs> it's kind of unfair to play a game that your opponent chooses. We couldn't decide on anything because we kept refusing each other's suggestions. Has your table decide on what to play? You can see it for yourself. He looked at my table and saw the fishing game there. Keiichi was surprised to see that my prediction was right again. He also remembered that I predicted his game too. So you're saying that the owner is going to bring out the game of life just as you predicted? I'm pretty good at predicting things. Are you serious? Alright, I'll believe you if you really do. That's bring it. That's the game of life. You bet. Your group is going to play the game of life. Now, she could really, like, actually put a proper bet on that. She'd make a bit of money. You know? It's. Well, I would actually. Wouldn't that technically count as changing fate ever so slightly if she does something different like that? Fine, I'm willing to bet you. Don't you cheat and talk him into it. He wants you to play a game he has a lot of, so, no, no. So he'll be bringing that one out. I remember it was covered by dust when he gave it to them last time. Since he had to buy the game, if we lost, he was trying to sell products he had a surplus of. Therefore, you won't be choosing any game at random. You'll be looking for one with bad sales. We're strong will to do so. That will of his is going to make the bull of fate all the stronger. In that sense, there's no guarantee that he'll be choosing a game of life specifically. He might choose something else that's also overstocked. Then it finally reappeared with a box covered in dust. Whoa! See? I told you so. He has a game of life box in his hands. The part of me that hoped it wouldn't be the game of life tasted bitterness at the betrayal. But the cynical part of me that expected it to happen found it amusing in a way. I felt like my personality was twisting more and more. Why did you pick that game? Oh, <laughs> well, I just picked it out random. I found it in a pile of inventory I have in the back. It's not like I bought the most speed up one. When he heard that the owner chose the game randomly, Keisha shrugged his shoulders in confusion. That must be his way of surrendering. Hey, Rick-chan, is this really a prediction? Nipa. Well, some old people from the village once told me that you're the reincarnation of Oishir Summer. They told me that you have special powers. So your prediction is always accurate. Is that really true? I was surprised that Keiichi actually believed the superstitious stories you heard from the elderly villagers. I just know that which is destined to happen. To make it clear, it's because I've already witnessed this world once before. Damn, I can't even make fun of you. Kate okay, seemed like he was just fooling around. He probably only thinks that I'm goofing around and acting haughty because my random predictions are all, all came true. I had hope for him. I thought the owner might bring a different game because Kate she once had the power to change fates. But that didn't happen. I'm not surprised. But I felt betrayed again. Huh. It hurts. I won the bet. I speak to Keiichi sarcastically. I wanted him to understand that no one can change the path of fate. However, Keiichi did nothing but smile. <laughs> Don't get carried away, Riku-chan. Don't just say that you can read the future. For a guy, words like destiny and fate mean a lot more than you think. There's no things you can figure out that easily. Me? I had no idea what he was trying to say, but he made me nervous. It wasn't a scary feeling. No, it was closer to hope. You said it was fate that the owner would choose the game of life. I have to admit that your prediction was correct. But you also said something else. What did I say? You said I was fate the blades. Yes, it was indeed his fate. Fate can change sometimes with uncertainty in time. But the possibility that it would change in this situation was very slight. I doubt that anything would turn out differently. In that case, I'll change that fate. Eh? Keiichi stood up in a hurry. Then he started talking to Tamita and Okamura, his group members. 
Sorry, but I own that game at home. I know every little rule about it. What? Is that true? Yep. So that won't be a fair game for us to play. Sir, I'm sorry, but can you give us a different game? Uh, sure, I'll bring you guys a different town. A different one. Anna picked up the game of life again and took it back into storage. As I remained there in shock, he returned with a game called Papa Pirates. I was actually thinking of that game. I was like, what if they just like play that or something? I don't know. <laughs> it's right there. How about this one? Oh, that is one where we stab a knife inside the barrel. What do you think, guys? This is a fair game, isn't it? Yeah, the rules are simple enough. Let's play that one. We got a deal now. We're going to play Papa Pirate. Keishi winked at me. Wait, that was probably Keishi said in the last bit. Keishi winked at me as I stood there with my mouth open. It looked like he had just forcefully changed my prediction. But for me, it's not that simple. It was supposed to be fate. That's why the owner brought the game of life to their table. It was supposed to play that game. That's what happened the last time. That's what was supposed to happen. But he just changed that fate in front of my eyes like it was nothing. It's as if someone asked me to stand an egg on its end. And as I struggled to do so, Keiichi forcefully cracked the egg and made it stand up in front of me. I should have had a far greater power than Keiichi, but why was I feeling so weak? Was it because I wasn't trying to fight against fate so I wouldn't get hurt? Because I was going with the flow without trying too hard? What was I thinking? Looks so bored just a few minutes ago. I know why. You didn't want to play the fishing game, did you? Yeah, I'm not going to hide it anymore. Then that's easy. So I'm a witch who's been living for more than a hundred years. So I thought I was better than everyone just because I can see the power of fate. That's stupid. I really am so stupid. And she tapped me on the back. He was urging me to return to my table. The sensation of his touch filled up my heart with emotion. I wasn't going to stand idly by anymore. I thought I couldn't cheat fate. I thought two weeks wasn't enough. But Keiichi justified his fate in a matter of five minutes. I feel bad for the fishies when I play the fishing game. I want to play something else. The other people at my table looked at me with confused expressions. The reactions were scaring me. Right at that moment I could f really feel that I was facing the impenetrable wall of fate. Even so I have nothing to be scared of. Sure, what game do you want to play? We'll play whatever you want. They accepted my suggestion and gave up on the fishing game so easily. That's right, I used to be much more aggressive before. But I became so tired and bitter and mean. I gave in to fate. But I'm not going to yield anymore. Keiichi taught me that. He didn't have any memories from his previous life, but Keiichi was still Keiichi. He never gave in to fate. He's stubborn. First time in a long while, I feel motivated to fight. If I want to, I can change Destiny in five minutes, and I have two whole weeks to work with. I'm different now. I'm going to fight against fate. Let's do our best. In contrast to my motivation, Hanyu was wearing a sad expression. <laughs> the music just abruptly ends. 